Hello, my name is Mabel Akwe, and I'm the senior policy analyst and also the head of monitoring and evaluation at the Africa Center for Energy Policy, ACEP. I'm happy to present to you this model, model one of the National Natural Resource Governance um, Fundamentals, which is looking at the mining life cycle. Um, participants will be exposed to the broader overview of the mining sector and also enhance the understanding of the different stages of the mining life cycle and other key issues related at each stage of the mining life cycle. So on your screen here, you see the main objectives uh, for this course, which I've already summarized. And this is the content of the model. Thus, as I mentioned, the main stages of the life cycle, which are four, then we will conclude and you will have your references and reading list. Before I proceed, I would want to quickly um, take you through why it is critical to understand or have an appreciable understanding of natural resource uh, sector if you are a, a stakeholder. There are four main points or four main reasons that I have come up with. Number one is the fact that um, natural resources play a significant role in the national development agenda of resource-rich countries. Particularly in our part of the world, Africa, proceeds from natural resources directly, directly support national budget and public spending. So it is difficult to have a smooth budgeting without the proceeds from the natural resource sector. Another reason why it is important is the fact that um, evidence abound in both literature and in real world that natural resource is a catalyst for economic growth and development. And this is deeply recognized by the African Union Agenda 2063, where um, the agenda seeks to achieve the general prosperity of the African people um, through its own people and through its natural resources. Thirdly, it is important because natural resource can be a conduit to economic downturns in resource-rich economies. And this phenomenon has come to be famously known as the Dutch disease or the resource case. And the last one is the fact that the gains or revenues from resources are unsustainable for two reasons. One, the fact that resources are exhaustible. That's once extracted, you forego the, the opportunity for future extraction. They are not renewable. And two, natural resources exposed to external market volatilities. As we have boom and bust cycles, there are times you have windfall gains. There are times that you record less. Therefore, it is very important to understand this and see how you invest revenues from natural resources and the general governance of the sector. So back to the main stages of the mine life cycle. In other literature, you may record um, five stages. Although we have compressed it to four main stages. We have the exploration and feasibility stage. We have the planning and construction stage. We have the development stage and we have the mine closure stage. Like any other project, a mine project has a start and an end period. And that's why it means that any gains that you can make from it can be done within a limited time frame. Hence, the need for collective responsibilities from all stakeholders. So going back to the very first stage, yes, as we have a four main stages, in other literature, you will see exploration and prospecting, you will see planning, you will see um, development and production, then you see processing and closure. 
But here we have merged um, development and processing together as development. So when you see here four and you see other literature showing five, don't be confused. We have just merged development and processing as one stage. So under the first stage of product uh, of the mind cycle, which is exploration. Exploration is perhaps the most essential stage in the mind life cycle. This involves more of data gathering. That's uh, the conduct of geological survey or studies to establish the scope, the grade, and the depth of the mineral deposit. Here also, um, it is also important to establish the exact location of the mineral or within the area under study. Other relevant geological information is also gathered here to inform the planning and processing design of the mine. It is important to note that prior to this stage, there are a lot of activities that go on, which include the negotiation and contracting in the award of the specific block before the investor can go ahead and undertake this stage. It is also worthy to know that the various stages of the mine cycle requires different forms of licensing or regulatory requirements from the particular jurisdiction to enable the investor undergo through the various stages of the mine cycle. The AMV, that is the African Mining Vision, has usually recommended that countries invest in research and development to acquire in-depth geological information on their resources. This will enhance or give them some leverage during negotiations to avoid being shortchanged by private companies. So most times the norm is that private companies have a lot more information on or geological information on the area, the mine area than the state. And this gives them a lot of leverage compared to the state. That's why the AMV recommend that countries are supposed to invest in geological studies so that they will be equipped with the in-depth and the value of the resources they have to enhance their chances of, of optimizing their take during the award of contract for resource extraction. Again, another critical um, uh, process that is done at this stage, that is the exploration stage, is a feasibility assessment, which is that's um, conducting environmental feasibility, technical analysis, and also undertaking um, some scoping studies to ascertain the viability of the project. Thus, it's not just about gaining the geological characteristic of the mineral ore, but also ascertaining or establishing its commerciality to know whether or not the mine project is profitable. This is the point that you will be able to decide whether to go ahead with the mining operation or to halt based on the information that will be gathered. And usually this stage of the mine life cycle takes between three to 10 years, which is usually in, based on the jurisdiction that um, the mine is, is usually subjected to one or two term um, extension based on the prevailing laws and also the contracting terms. So in summary, when we come to the exploration feasibility assessment, which is the first stage of the mine life cycle, one, we have the scoping study to understand the geological characteristics of the mineral to also ascertain the location and also to the feasibility study to ascertain the environmental impact as well as the mitigation measures to undertake and establish the economic viability of the project. 
there are a number of legal requirements, as I mentioned, that each stage of the life cycle requires legal requirements. Um, as you can see, you need a prospecting licenses, the licenses, you need reconnaissance licenses, and all that. So I mentioned earlier that the mind cycle has an, a start and an end period. Therefore, you have a limited time frame to optimize any gains, and this requires re re uh, collective responsibilities from stakeholders. So now we have some of the responsibilities or actions at this stage include the investor compliance with exploration obligations, because once you are given your exploration license or right, there are certain obligations that are enlisted in your in your in the right that you have been given. And as an investor, you need to comply strictly to this and to government strict monitoring of investor and compliance to ensure that the investor operates within the remit of his license. Because at this stage, the, invest, the investor is not supposed to mine. They are just supposed to take geological information of the area to inform their decision to mine or not to mine, or to also gather other key um, information to inform the planning and the design of the mine. Now, this stage two is also important to involve the community to ensure that the investors are compliant and that the exploration activity will not yield any adverse environmental or social um, impacts to the community. Because this stage also involves some level of drilling to get the rocks, to study the rock properties and assess the mineral content of the rocks. So that brings us to stage two of the mine life cycle. However, this stage, whether to proceed to this stage or not, depends on the outcome from the exploration and the feasibility stage. That if the outcome is positive, if based on the geological information, it was established that the mineral ore is in commercial quantities and the fact that um, the activity, the extractive activity can go on without yielding adverse, significant adverse impact on the environment and also on the well-being of the communities. So once, all these are justified, then the investor can proceed to this stage of the mine life cycle, which is the planning and construction stage. So this can be broken into two. Number one is the planning. The planning involves designing and planning of the mine, which includes characterizing the mineral resource based on the geological information that was gathered from the initial stage of the mine life cycle. Then you move on to designing the mine, the mine plan. This one, there are certain things that should be taken consideration of. That is in the design of the mine, it has to take consideration of the safety or operational risk of the mining activity. That is the well-being of employees, the well-being of contractors and communities, and all other stakeholders that are likely to patronage the site, the mine site, should be considered to ensure responsible mining. The environmental impact of the mining activity is also considered at this stage of the mine life cycle. The mine plan should be designed to ensure minimal environmental impact. Thus, the waste management the use of eco-friendly and um, high technologies to minimize carbon emissions. Reclamation plan is also done here to ensure that after the mine is operations are over, how do we reclaim the, the mine after closure to ensure that after closure of the mine, it will not pose any adverse impact to both the environment and nearby communities. 
At this stage also is the need for public, a lot of public consultations. We have the EPIC processes, which is pre-prior informed consent, where the company engages the community, whether there is the need to relocate or resettle parts of the community, the compensation processes, all these are done to ensure that the company obtains the social license to operate. Because although you may have the license from government, without the social license from the community within which you are supposed to operate, the mining operations cannot go on, or otherwise the impact could be dire. We have evidence of a lot of conflicts between mining companies and the community members because of how some of these public consultations and compensation packages were done. Another key thing of relevance at this stage is how the company will plan its social response, corporate social responsibilities. At this stage also, like I mentioned, you need to plan the acquisition of the various relevant licenses that you need and permits that are necessary to ensure the smooth operation of the mining um, activity. After all these are done, then we come to the construction, the actual construction of the mine. And here, the company either does it is by itself or is outsourced. Most of the mining activities are outsourced. Only few are actually done by the company. So that's where we have the issue of local content, where most governments or most states would like to deepen the participation of the indigenous people in the activity of the mine so that they can also um, give back to the community by virtue of giving out their land. However, the problem here is that most times the local communities are unable to participate at this stage of the mining life cycle. Why? Because they may either not have the requisite skill or whatever services or goods they could provide to the mine may not be of the standard required by the company. So although there are opportunities for local content here, in most cases, especially in our African context, the communities do not get to benefit from the act various activities that go on under this stage. Usually, this stage will take between five to 10 years because of the construction of the mine and everything that goes into it to ensure that the safety, the health, the environment, of all stakeholders are considered. In summary, and at this stage, like I mentioned, broken into two under planning, you have considerations for safety, environment, the economic viability, public consultation to ensuring an, an effective mine plan. Secondly, the construction of the mine involves building and setting up of accommodation and mine sites for employees and for the development of the mines, access routes, building of access routes, foods, establishing of food supplies and water supply system, establishment of processing facilities, waste management facilities, and also the establishment of shared infrastructure. By shared infrastructure, I mean things like power, and all that, but there are some communities who, which do not have access to these basic amenities. So with the presence of the mine, it is expected that you do not just create the power for your confines, your, for your mine site, but you do it for the community so that the community can also benefit from the presence of the mining operation. All right, so I've already mentioned that. So this moves us to the next stage. And before that, as I mentioned earlier, it involves collect collective responsibility of all stakeholders. 
And here, investors' actions are mainly to take into account the previous requirements of the government and the community as agreed. Thus, you need to operate within, you need to operate within your licenses. You need to operate within the rights that the state agency has granted you. And here, there's also limited responsibility and actions 